So thank you very much for your patience. We're all in. Oh, John, we're all do you want to record? Oh, there we go. Good. Okay. It's currently being recorded. Wonderful. So uh, welcome again. Uh, uh, my name is Betsy Dalton. I am a member of the steering committee for the Include Collaboratory, your hosts for today's webinar. And I'm also a member of our professional development team. Uh, this webinar is the second in a series of webinars we're holding this year on examples of access, inclusion, and universal design for learning in higher education around the world. And we're so pleased to have all of you with us today, and particularly pleased to have our wonderful presenter, Virna Rossi. And Virna Rossi is a, a very innovative educator uh, working with Ravensburg uh, University in London, England. And uh, she'll be presenting today on uh, the, the rear view mirror and her perspective on the use of UDL. Just a, a bit about, um, about Virna. Uh, she first became connected with the Include Collaboratory uh, early last year uh, when she started to develop a number of very innovative um, uh, uh, videos that helped educators to learn how to transition from uh, you know, to online learning from face to face learning when the pandemic started. And uh, she and uh, Sean Bracken, who's also on our steering committee, have known each other for quite a while. So uh, we became aware of these these wonderful videos and they actually are all hosted on the include website, um, which you see the uh, the link to at the top of the screen there with the include uh, logo. So uh, there are many wonderful materials, including this entire series from Verna Rossi. And today she's going to be presenting um, on looking through the lens of UDL principles and practices to inform learner design. And I'm sure you're going to uh, truly enjoy this wonderful presentation. So um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Verna. Thank you so much, Betsy. That's such a wonderful introduction. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm really pleased to be with you all today. And especially as I've heard, this is a very um, global event in the sense that we've got uh, uh, participants, guests coming from all over the world. So welcome. And I hope life is treating you well in this time of pandemic still. I know there is pandemic fatigue and in Europe it's a Friday afternoon. So I don't know where you are, what time it is, but it's probably still Friday, <laughs> so you probably come to the end of the week. So thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate this. And uh, thank you for include, <laughs> to include, for including me. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and I would like to just uh, make sure that I've got the right settings on. So I'm going to have the captions turned on, hopefully. Um, bear in mind that the captions are not 100% accurate. So I hope they will not distract you somehow. But we thought for accessibility, it's better to have them on than off. And also, um, just because we have so many different accessibility needs of uh, people joining today, including visual impairment, we, um, we've got, I have some slides with pictures and um, only a little bit of text, but I will actually be reading and commenting, explaining the images so that everybody can benefit from the event. So I just want to say that I'm, I'm very happy to connect with all of you on Twitter, if you are on Twitter as well, or if you have any questions, this is my um, email and then, of course, um, in the chat during this event. So I'm going to tell you what this webinar is is about. Um, my my sort of uh, intention. First of all, I like to review with you collaboratively UDL praxis. In other words, um, how do we put into practice the wonderful um, ideas and principles of UDL? This approach to remove barriers to create more equitable learning experiences. Uh, but then we're going to go beyond um, the using UDL to design learning. We're going to be talking about how we can uh, evaluate our UDL course design. 
And I'm going to invite you during this webinar to um, share ideas in the chat, um, although I cannot see it right now, but <laughs> I will be informed of questions, etc. But also we're going to be using a Padlet and also we're going to have one opportunity where you can be in breakout rooms. And uh, we hope you will wel welcome this um, opportunity to actually uh, get to say hello to others and uh, um, share your ideas about UDL. So that's coming later on. Um, so I'm going to start by asking you to um, write some ideas in the chat. So the question is, what do you think is a game changer invention? I know it sounds like a random question, but just think about an invention that you think changed the course of history. Um, but because I can't see the chat, perhaps if either Betsy or Sean or anybody can tell me what ideas are being shared there. The airplane, the wheel, computers, <laughs> writing, clocks. <laughs> yeah. Internet, yes. Radio, plastic. Oh. <laughs> yes. The, oh. the fork, <laughs> the mobile phone. Thank you. OK, so that's so many different ideas, and they're, they're all true and valid. And if I was thinking the chat is a <laughs> game changer invention, the chat in live meetings. Um, but if you have read the blog, in case you've read the blog, you might know that um, I'm going to be using a, a game changer invention as a metaphor in this webinar. And the one I'm referring to is the rear view mirror. So in this slide, I have a picture of a, a car and um, the front of the car with the, um, the windscreen. And then you can see the road ahead, but also at the same time, just above, there is the rear view mirror wide and you can see the scene behind, the road behind. And this is why this is such an interesting metaphor because the rear view mirror um, has um, <laughs> changed the course of history by al allowing um, humans to view two visual fields at once, because you can, while you're looking ahead, pretty much at a glance, you can also check what's happening behind, because we don't have an eye behind our heads. So to me, this is revolutionary, but it's also a very interesting metaphor for a UDL in terms of course evaluation. So we're going to use this metaphor throughout this webinar. We're going to come back to this. Um, but um, I also thought in conversation with Sean and Betty, we don't want to assume that everybody is 100% um, fluent in um, UDL practices. Perhaps some of you are new to it, but are interested. So we're going to just quickly recap uh, what UDL principles and guidelines are about. And as I was saying before, UDL, Universal Design for Learning, is an approach to designing learning to remove barriers um, to, to, um, uh, for access accessibility for um, many different types of learners, for all learners, so that we can create more equitable learning experiences. And it's based on brain science on three primary networks. So in this slide, uh, for those who can't see the slide, I have a visual aid um, which um, sort of turns the three primary networks, the three principles of UDL, and the three sets of UDL guidelines, um, by designing them, by drawing them in shapes, they form three people standing. So I'm going to go through this quickly. So the three primary networks are the recognition learning, the strategic learning, and the affective learning. And in terms of UDL, when we think about those in education, although there is neurodiversity, but we all have these networks, and the principles then that we can derive from these are representation, action and expression, and engagement. And what do they mean in practice? So what does it mean when we come to designing courses or learning experiences? Well, the guidelines which are written at the bottom here, the three sets of UDL guidelines, are for representation, it's about the what of learning. For example, the content, the input, um, I don't know how else perhaps you call it, but what the, what the learners are supposed, let's say, to learn, or what's in the program, the syllabus. So how do we um, present this? Um, so the guiding principle there is a flexible ways to present what we teach and learn. So it's not just one way, but it's many different ways and flexible. 
Then the action and expression. This is about flexible options for how we learn and express what we know. So when students uh, learn new concepts and new um, ideas on a course, there is usually a practice or application phase. And, and then usually there is some sort of assessment. That's how we know whether we have achieved the learning that we had hoped to achieve. So the question here is, in the practice and assessment, is there flexibility? Is there choice? That would be a universal design way of, learn, um, of designing learning. Um, maybe I didn't say that sentence properly. Um, so engagement, the last one, is about flexible options for generating and sustaining motivation or the why of learning. Now, this is so important. Normally, actually, I mentioned this first because really, if we don't give students the, a, a reason, a good reason to engage with the learning, if we don't motivate them, then actually it doesn't matter how wonderful the course is and how amazing the assessment is. If they don't engage with it, actually they will not learn. So it's really important, especially we've seen in this last year of pandemic pedagogy, that we uh, manage to engage and make sure the students are with us or with it, with the learning. So these networks and these guidelines and principles, they are interconnected. They are not segregated because our brain is one thing. But it's useful to have these three perspectives when we design learning because it helps us address the what, the how and the why of learning. So this is what UDL is about. Now, for some of you, you might be champions of UDL and well done. For some of you, this is new. Um, some of you are now thinking of what you want to implement UDL or implementing more in your uh, learning design. So I'm going to ask you to use a Padlet, but I'm going to, so we're going to put this in the chat, the actual link, and you will look, see the um, QR code, but I'm going to come back to that slide. I just want to show you the Padlet. So the Padlet is a very simple um, representation, we can say, of these three principles. Uh, can you see the Padlet now? Yeah. Yes, we can. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so it's called UDL principles and practice. And it's got a question here. How have you been able or would you like to embed UDL principles in your practice? In other words, you've now, um, I mean, obviously this is just a summary of a summary because there are books and books about UDL and many resources, but this is just the gist. So now that we've discussed the three main principles, thinking about your learning design for an upcoming course or one that you're running right now, um, I've, I've written some prompts here. The why of learning. So how have you provided multiple means of engagement for your students? The what of learning. How have you provided multiple means of representation uh, for example, with a variety of input modes, neurodiversity friendly, I put some prompts there. Uh, the how learning, how have you provided multiple means of action and expression, for example, through formative and summative assessment? So I'm going to ask you to go onto this Padlet. You, if you have not used Padlet before, you click on the plus, it will allow you to add your own little comment and it's um, already arranged in three columns. So you can comment on these, just a few minutes. So I'm gonna go back to, so that you can actually see the QR code. And is it possible to please put this link in the chat? It's there now. It's there now. Thank you. And just wanted to say, if any of you have got issues accessing the um, Padlet itself, um, it's okay to put your comments in the chat uh, because we don't want to miss out on reading your thoughts. So if you have to write it in the chat, uh, you can write how you think you might be able to embed UDL principles in your teaching. Or otherwise, I'll see you on the Padlet. <laughs> so I'm going to be just a little bit quiet while I see what you write on the Padlet. So I can see on the Padlet here, it says, can we also use this for... Ah. 
Let me see if I can read this. Yeah, they they were asking were asked if they could use it for general comments because I think there's uh, some people can't access the chat function. Oh, I see. Um, maybe I'm just wondering if I add the column here, general comments. And here in this column, you can add any question you want, uh, rather than maybe putting it under the three headings. Is that does that work? Yeah. <laughs> so some people have written here. Uh, let me just see. Oh yeah. <laughs> Range of examples, case studies. Yes, for the engagement. Um, I strive to include different types of content, reading, video, audio, yeah. Yes, according to different students' backgrounds. Short animation videos, awesome. Struck to the flow of the lesson, yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a model, exactly. <laughs> Nice how to, uh, you model this uh, technology, exactly. Um, means of action, let's see. I tell you what's a bit annoying is that it's very narrow here. It all goes down, but I can't, okay, that's it. Let's see. Verna, if you wish, I can share my screen here. It's it's up to you, but if you, because I have oh, a set. I have a separate screen and um, and I could share it if you wish for for just for the Padlet, if that might. Yeah, help. sure. But uh, that's fine. The only thing is that means I have to start, stop sharing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll share it. Please, please, please. Please. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. If you want to share this better. Thank you. <laughs> I was saying the benefit of having two screens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Much better. Thank you. Fantastic. I just have to make it a little bit bigger, though. Can you make it just a little bit bigger? Um, oh, or maybe it's not possible. Sorry, I think I have it, to return to the other section to let people in, unless other folks can let can let people in. And I can return back. Yeah, that's right. Don't worry, the lobby is fine. Ah. Uh, I'm just wondering if you make it just a little bit bigger. Sure. Yeah, I, I will do. Absolutely. Thank just a moment. How can I do that now? If you if you simply click Control Plus, that's what I normally do. It automatically makes your screen bigger. Okay. Yeah, I'm learning. <laughs> that's okay. okay. Yes, you see. Oh, I've a got it. Up here. Yes. Please. Is that good? Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Fantastic. And I'm sure so, like so. Mm -hmm. You'd like me to scroll down a little. Yes, or... please. If you want to scroll down on the, I think the how of learning is quite interesting about the assessment. I'm interested to see mid semester survey to adjust course design. Course design is needed. That's good. I'm just I'm searching out for has to scroll down on this one. Oh, if you if you, you could, that's a, that just just on the right, you see there is a, um, the scrolling. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, on the right of the um, third column. <laughs> OK, this one here. Yes, just a bit down. Oh, for, okay. yeah, that's, it. Okay. that's it. Thank you. That's it. Multiple ways of brainstorming. Yeah. Offering choice of assessment type and style of presentation. Well done. Yes. So yeah, that's right. Video podcast, essay, poster. So I'm I'm sure there are this, there are so many rich examples. The good thing about Padlet is that it, it's it's living, so we can uh, go back to it. We can add, include student voice. Excellent. Exactly. Creating a menu of ways precisely. Allow students to submit um, video, audio, recorded work. Yes. Fantastic, Verna. That's really good. Yeah, thank you so much. OK, so we can stop. If you if you don't mind, stop sharing that, then I can go back to the presentation. So I just wanted to literally do it live with you <laughs> that we could um, more or less brainstorm through Padlet 
ways in which we can um, let me just go back to the presentation. Yeah, ways in which we can um, um, implement um, embed the UDL principles in our learning design. So imagine now that you have designed or you have understood how to design uh, your courses or modules or units, depending on where you live, using UDL principles. Now, it's really important. Sometimes we miss this crucial step to also um, decide uh, at the outset how we're going to evaluate that learning design. So the next slide and the next point of the webinar is this, using UDL to evaluate the learning design. And this is where we go back to the mirrors, because in the car, there is a rear view mirror in the middle and then two side mirrors. And the purpose is because it, they provide three different perspectives to look at the scene behind. So we could take these three rear and side mirrors as the three UDL principles against which to evaluate how inclusive our learning design is. Because again, just like the three mirrors provide three perspectives, the three UDL principles provide us three lenses through which we can check that learning that we designed. So why would we do this? Because the same reason in a way that we glance when we're driving. So in this slide, for those who are not able to see the slide, in this slide there is a picture of a side mirror which shows the traffic, the scene, the, the cars behind, the road behind, while the car is traveling. We can see that it's traveling because it looks a bit blurred, it's going fast, it's moving. So that's exactly the point of this metaphor. The idea is that while we travel, in inverted commas, while we are on this learning journey with the students, which could be our course, unit, module, whatever it is that we're teaching, as we go, at, at which point and how can we check the scene behind, check our learning design with the help of the students? And why do we want to do this? Because we want to inform the rest of our journey. Somebody put it, in fact, in the Padlet. That is so crucial. If I don't know what's happening behind me while I'm driving, it's possible I'm going to have an accident because perhaps the car is, is starting to overtake me, but I didn't know, I didn't check. And in fact, interestingly, I was looking at some statistics that we check the rear and side mirrors every six to eight seconds when we drive. That's really often. Um, so because we know this is so important to inform the journey ahead, to get to our destination. So likewise, with teaching and learning. Once we have designed our course, we absolutely need to um, plan, design the evaluation of that learning experience, the evaluation of the design. Did it do what we wanted it to do? Did it work? Is it effective? And so when it comes to UDL, in other words, have, are, we, um, are we managing to be inclusive as we were hoping when we designed the course? So this is where I'm going to ask you for your uh, second interaction to be in a breakout room. So I hope you don't mind and please don't worry, you don't have to turn your camera on, uh, but it would be nice if you were able to just uh, talk with, with each other. And um, we were thinking of putting you in groups of five and for about f 10 minutes, perhaps a bit less, perhaps eight minutes. And what is the question that we would like you to discuss in these rooms? It's really to prov provide you with a little forum, a little cluster where you can discuss and share ideas about how and when will you evaluate the effectiveness of your UDL course design with the help of your students. So it's not just about you reflecting or thinking about that, but how will you involve the students in evaluating your course design and whether your UDL, um, your use of UDL on the course has, is working. So um, I, I don't know whether this is possible, but Sean, the idea would be to broadcast, so to create the rooms, and then once everybody's in the rooms, to broadcast that question to all the groups, uh, which I could put in the chat. And one thing is, one, once you are in the group, if you would please select one person to be the scribe in inverted commas, who takes notes, if you can actually take note, of the key ideas you discuss. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. I'm going to stop sharing. I think.
I may have inadvertently perhaps moved people into groups already. OK. <laughs> OK. How long are they in those groups for? And what was the message that I should broadcast? So, uh, thank uh, you. I did, I, send a, I did send a two minute warning. Um, oh, good. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. OK, so in that case, I'm going to go back to the slides. Let me find them. Yeah. I'll just send a message to let people know that I'm going to just close those rooms right now. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Because I didn't know how to get out of it. <laughs> so um, that's it. Yeah. So if I close, I'll just close it now and yes. uh, OK, and then people can rejoin. Thank you. Is that the only one, uh, Verna? Yes, yes. We don't have any other break. Thank room, you. No. Goodness. I think a lot of it, I think it was a bit, uh, it was in a bit of a strange <laughs> experience for for some people, I'm not sure they're as effective as. Uh, <laughs> in in uh, I ended up in a room. It worked well for me. Oh, good. But, uh, I'm not sure about the other rooms. Well, so it, it worked well for us in room nine. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's really good because I, I just thought it would be such a shame to be in such a, a global event and not being able to at least say hi to a few people yes. and uh, do sharing. Was, That's good. So welcome back. Perhaps as we said before, if you don't mind to keep your camera off just only because of the bandwidth to save bandwidth for others. Yeah. And also if you can mute, mute yourself again. Um, yeah. That, that's helpful so we don't get background noise. Thank you. So um, I don't know whether somebody is sharing because if I go to share, I'm not sure if I'm able to. Am I able to share? Yes, we're seeing that, Verna. Oh, good. Thank you. OK, thank you so much. I'm really glad you were able to have that chat in the in the breakout rooms. So um, I just wanted to ask you if you um, maybe for ease, if we can put that link of the Padlet again, I just wanted to ask people to write here in this column. Um, that, so I've added evaluation. How and when will you evaluate the effectiveness of your UDL course design with the help of your students? So if that's OK, just one person per group or anybody, really, you can write um, you can write your ideas. Plus Delta, that's interesting. But you, you, you'll have to explain a little bit more what that means. <laughs> I don't know who's written. Well, this, is the, this is the wonderful thing about Padlet is that most of the comments are anonymous, so I do not know who's written it, so you can feel totally safe. <laughs> you can write. I uh, don't have to worry. Reflection is part of the instruction. Make that visible. This informs the design and can also make changes in semester. That's a very good point. Yeah. Through formative assessment. Yes. Very good point. Have to be maybe more intentional about gathering input when online. Exactly. This is better than reading the room. Yes. Very true. We had an interesting conversation in our room about this. Evaluate engagement early on through informal activities, discussion threads, easy things to engage with. Yes, early on, that's really key. Weekly discussions on what, are, uh, on what we're doing for the class to see what activities are helpful. Journaling about what has learned. Yes, that's awesome action. Two stars in the wish, I love that. <laughs> I learned that from my husband. My husband is a primary school teacher <laughs> and they do two stars in the wish. <laughs> Self-assessment at the start of the course, mid and end, not just reflection, can use other methods such as acting, drawing, recording of student views. Yes. Actually, this reminds me, a colleague told me that um, her mid-course evaluation was um, to ask students to send her a one-minute video uh, recorded, a selfie basically, with their telephone just telling them what they thought about the course that far. One minute per student. 
And so she had plenty of feedback. So it's a really good point, actually. Um, yes, drawing from the ideas of co-creation. Yes, and perhaps reflection through a focus group at the end of the year. That's really good. Except the only thing is that's really useful for the next iteration. Absolutely. Uh, but then we, we won't be able to, um, it will not benefit this current cohort if obviously it's just the end of the course, but it's also very useful, yeah. Yes, the evaluation has to come through the initial design itself. Fantastic. Whoever said that, well done. <laughs> they are all excellent ideas, actually. Um, I can't read all of them now, but uh, you can, exactly. Google Docs, I mean, seriously, so many fantastic um, ideas and all of them really valid. So I'm going to, um, can I just ask you, do you, oh dear, <laughs> sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> I meant to present, right. So can you see my slides again now? Yes, all good, Verna. Yes, thank you, fantastic. So um, thank you very much, really. So we've done two sort of big things <laughs> so far. One is we have shared through a Padlet um, how we can in practice apply UDL principles and now we have discussed how we can um, design the evaluation of that design um, in well mostly we're talking about in course during the course now I'm, I'm just going to share very briefly a case study using Ketso I don't know whether you've heard of Ketso before I saw Ketso about a year ago actually at the beginning of the pandemic um, on Twitter because I'm quite active on Twitter and um, I thought to myself, wow, I absolutely love this tool. So it's a felt. I've got it here. I don't know whether you can see it. So it comes in this bag. I do not get a percentage, by the way. <laughs> I, perhaps I should, but I don't get a percentage. But I just wanted to show you what it's about. It's, a, it's a, You get this bag with a felt, uh, two felts actually, and the felt to a piece of material, and then a bag with these leaves. And, and markers, and the leaves have got different colors. So then, um, according to whatever activity you're doing, you have prompts, you have uh, mind mapping to do, or in this case, I did, I used Ketso for my, my own self-evaluation. In other words, I sat down, I took the felt, I, um, for those who can't see the picture, this is a photo of this uh, Ketso representation. I took three white uh, shapes, um, which are the three UDL principles, representation, action, expression, and engagement. The three um, mirrors, yes, <laughs> the rear view and the side mirror. So this is, was my way of looking back. And then I wrote in different, on these leaves, which are movable, so then you can sort of shift them around. On different colors, I wrote what I thought um, I had done, which was intentional, um, from the start of the course, when I designed the course, I was intentionally trying to build in, to um, embed UDL principles. So I wrote my self-evaluation, what I thought I was doing in inverted commas well. <laughs> so, so for example, just to give an example, because perhaps it's a bit small, representation, I put guest speakers. So I teach the PG cert, Postgraduate Certificate in Education. So it's a staff development course in service course for teachers at uh, university at the University of Ravensbourne in London and um, I invited external guest speakers um, who had a range of backgrounds and in fact global and uh, different um, expertise and etc and so I invited them as guest speakers onto the course they joined our live lessons they spoke to the students they proposed activities to the students they had slides they had videos um, links. So this was my way of um, representing the content. In other words, the course input was not just through me, but it was through these guest speakers as well to provide a variety of voices and perspective. Um, and this, of course, was also engaging. So it goes with engagement. Um, something else I did in terms of action and expression, I sorry, actually sorry, managed. Sorry, Verna. Sorry to interrupt you. Would you mind, uh, I'm really sorry. If you wouldn't mind turning the captions on again, because I think we do oh, have sorry. some colleagues sorry, who, sorry. Might, who might be hard of hearing. So is it possible to? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sure. So sorry. You see, because when you get out of it, yes, then it stops. When I clicked on the panel, thank you so much for telling me. Yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
So um, you can see then this this uh, Ketzo representation. What I did, um, I managed <laughs> to get the budget to buy um, one of these sets per participant on the PG cert. So the students had a Ketzo kit each. And so at this point of the course, which was, I decided this should be a few weeks into the course. The course is for two terms. I didn't want to wait until the end of term one. I wanted to do it in the middle of term one, which was more or less four weeks into the course. I wanted to check with the students. Has my learning design worked? Uh, have these UDL principles um, created a more equitable learning experience? So the Padlet, which I have the link here, is not for you to do anything on, it's just to show you. Um, this Padlet is the result and it's basically the photos. This is a Padlet collecting pictures of what the students did. So the students also had um, the time in groups to uh, think about the UDL principles, which were part of the course, in fact, and then they use these leaves to put the key um, ideas, whether I was doing it well, whether there was something else I could do. One group decided to do it digitally. They didn't use the Ketso kit, that's fine. And so this was very rich feedback for me. I'm going back to the slides. It was very rich feedback for me because at that point of the course, first of all, it was embedded in the lesson. It was a learning activity. It wasn't an add-on, something shoehorned, which didn't quite fit. It wasn't a survey because there's survey fatigue. So it was a learning activity done together with the students. I also thought it was very beneficial for them because it helped them understand how I had, what my intention was for the course and how I had designed the course, what I was trying to aim for in terms of inclusivity. And also it provides the students with very rich vocabulary that they can use to describe their learning experience on any course, on any module that they take. So it's actually, I think, beneficial for the students as well. And then, of course, because of that feedback, I was able to adjust a few things. For example, some students suggested that they wanted more debates. They wanted to actually debate ideas. Um, and so then I added that because it was early enough I could make those changes. I'm just aware of the time, so I'm sorry I have to keep going. Just then finally to say, now, if you are a UDL champion, you have been using UDL for many years. Well done. <laughs> Um, but I think we can all refine our practices. We, there's always maybe some room for improvement. So um, the last slide says, keep calm, keep traveling, and keep checking the rear side mirrors. In other words, when you design your learning experiences, also um, design the evaluation of that experience, when to do it and how to do it. Try to embed it in the lessons, if possible, and make it really a, a conversation with the students because you want a rich a range of feedback, not just your own views, but also the students and the literature, etc. And uh, the, the um, driver here in this picture is sitting in his car and uh, wiping the side mirror so we can <laughs> see better when we use these lenses, the three UDL principles, not only to design, but to look back and check our design. So, uh, because I think we should have some time for questions, I'm going to stop talking. Just one thing is in the chat, if you have access to the chat, please write your main takeaway from this webinar. And thank you very much. Or you can write it on that Padlet, uh, which you also have the link in the chat. So what is your main takeaway? And then in the meanwhile, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, you will get, I'm sure, these slides with the recording and uh, you will see the resources here um, about Ketso, about UDL and my blog posts. So I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to uh, let either Sean or Betsy, um, if there's anything from the chat and you want to... Um, oh, yeah, you want to tell me. <laughs> are the takeaways? Hi. That uh, it, we don't have any questions yet, but uh, people are saying wonderful dual level learning from the uh, students' future for, for the students' future practice. Takeaway, uh, their takeaway was to embed evaluation as part of the course design, and I think we would all agree with that. 
right? Embed the feedback mechanism into the learning experience and also an, another excellent takeaway. Um, another takeaway is to intentionally design regular course evaluation as a learning task. So uh, I think you've helped people, Verna, to uh, really think about the evaluation and the learning task in conjunction with each other, which is, of course, a great idea. Then um, says, can you please put the slide on tools uh, up again? Uh, they, they wanted that. Um, so the, uh, I'm not sure what that means, the tools. I'm wondering if it might be uh, somebody Perfect. who... Who Maybe who about Ketso and the uh, probably about Ketso. Somebody said that they want. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Yep. So the last slide, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes. And yep. people really like the rear view mirror analogy. Uh, you know, keeping objects uh, larger than they are thinking about objects as larger than they appear, right? <laughs> oh yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> So I don't know if anybody has any questions or if people want to unmute themselves and ask a question if they prefer not to uh, type it in, but would just like to ask it verbally. Uh, we welcome you to do that at this time. Does anybody have a question they'd like to pose to Verna? This is your chance. We have there's, five. A, there's a hands up function on the top of the of the bar, so maybe we'll use the hands up function if somebody would like to come in. Sure. Oh, by the way, as uh, maybe people think about it, there was one question because I was actually in a breakout room because I wasn't sure if I was going to. So that was nice to be some, with some colleagues. And uh, um, somebody asked, which was a really good question, um, is the, the, the slight issue that there could be with um, the UDL principle of uh, representation, providing flexibility and variety of in, in input. And um, the fact that the students perhaps say, oh, no, no, I, I actually want um, you know, the same thing <laughs> every week. I want to know where I am. I want it predictable, etc. So what we were talking about is the fact that um, with the UDL principles, it doesn't mean that it's all random, you know, <laughs> all the time. It, it, it doesn't mean it's not organized or structured. And um, in fact, having a consistent, recognizable structure, which actually perhaps also helps form a certain identity for, for a certain course or cohort, that's actually quite important. It helps students um, because they can situate themselves. They know, oh, OK, roughly, you know, usually the week works this way. You know, first we do this type of thing, then we do this type of thing, then we end up with this. Uh, but the point is, the, the, whole, the point of the UDL is not really just to get rid of the structure or, or the predictability in that sense. It's more about the actual input or the content within that structure. So, of course, you have a certain course, you know, layout um, that that's roughly that's how it works every week. How many hours are live um, lessons? How many hours are asynchronous? But within the input, Instead of, for example, even in this past year of pandemic, there's been so much video and to be honest, it's exhausting, <laughs> you know, so if every single week you provide one or two hours of videos and, and, and perhaps the videos are excellent, but you know, that's all you do every single week, even though it seems innovative, actually it becomes cognitively very, very taxing on students. So UDL is about providing variety. So you will have an article one week, a podcast another week, um, a video another week, an infographic. So or dual coding in writing and um, audiovisual, if possible. So it's not always possible, but there is there is a question here that's come up. Um, they uh, from Dawn uh, says we have designed in a range of assessment. They've designed a range of assessment choices but most select writing. Do you have any tips on that, Verna? Yeah, that's a very good point. Yes, so, so it's interesting to think about why. Why would that be the case? Um, and I can suggest that the case is that usually the evil you know is better than the unknown. <laughs> so it doesn't mean they choose writing because it's the easiest for them. But they probably choose writing because they have been um, somehow, you know, uh, used to writing. Perhaps they know 
um, the, the, the structure of, of, of an essay or a written piece. And um, maybe there is quite a lot of help in terms of um, academic support, study skill support, exemplars. So they choose somehow the easiest, but not because it's easier for them, but perhaps because they're used to it. So when you provide choice, that's a really good question, actually, because when you provide choice and flexibility, you also have to ask yourself, if I'm asking students um, to, for example, let's say, OK, they can do a written piece or a video, but have I provided any exemplars of videos? Have they got any idea of what a video would look like, even if it's super simple, but have they seen it? Because if they've never seen it, they might imagine this incredible, you know, uh, high quality tech video, which perhaps they can't quite achieve. So they will revert to what they know better. Um, so I think it's about providing choice, but also providing um, the uh, exemplars and support for those choices. And that is why it's challenging, because you've got to think about all of that and put the, all of that in place for those choices to be real, if that makes sense. Well, Verna, thank you so much for this wonderful webinar. I know you've really you. uh, sparked uh, many different ideas. And there was one question that said, and you probably can't answer it, but they wanted to know where you get all of your energy. And I think we'd all <laughs> like to know that too. <laughs> and we, we, they want you to bottle it. No, okay. Adrenaline. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, we'd like to thank everyone for attending today, and uh, this is, again, part of a series that we're holding throughout the year, approximately one webinar per month, and our next webinar is going to be on Friday, um, actually uh, May 21st, <laughs> not March, it's May 21st, and uh, it will be presented by Linda uh, Yu and uh, Pia Hagblom of uh, Christianstad University, focusing on the impact of uh, universal design for learning in higher education and the road we are on in Sweden. And uh, you can uh, register for that by going to the Include website. So once again, thank you so Great. much, Verna Rossi. Thank you so it's much, everybody. Wonderful webinar. The webinar has been recorded and it will be posted uh, within a few days uh, on the Include Collaboratory website. So uh, we appreciate everybody's attendance. And uh, thank you very much. I think we're finished. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye now. Betsy, you're still in the room, are you? I am still here. Yeah, okay. I thought I thought okay, I'd hang good. up. Good, good, Everybody good. Can, can hang up. Uh, who's no well, well, well done for well done for navigating without any um, without any view of the uh, of the slides. That was it just... actually was quite easy because you know I knew the slides and um, Verna did a wonderful job of uh, explaining, and that actually came across very, very well. I think we should follow that process as we move forward to verbally explain the pictures that are on the slide, because I think it not only helped me, but it helped everyone. And, you know, it really uh, conveys the concepts very well. So that was great. And Sean, yeah, worked worked out fine, I think. <laughs> a lot, I think it did as well. There was a couple of hiccups, but <laughs> so I think that's... Fewer glitches than last time. Yeah. Pardon? many fewer glitches than last time yes indeed yes indeed yeah yeah much smoother um and um yeah i think just lots of very positive feedback in the in the chat function as well which is really good to see um but listen i'm, I'm just going to thank you um betsy and uh and wish you a, a, a nice end of rest of weekend yeah have have a nice weekend there sean and uh uh, I guess we'll all be talking on Monday in, in our meeting, right? Isn't that when we have the meeting about the uh, grant?
Yes, indeed. Yes, yes. So see, see you on Monday. Paul, I see you're still in the in the chat function down there. So it was very nice to meet you, Paul. Paul from Kenya. Um, Ron, I think from the US is still with us. So we've had, we still have people from around the world who don't quite want to leave us just yet. <laughs> I guess not. Or maybe Ron wants to hear what we're saying. Hi, Ron. It's been a long time since I've uh, I've uh, talked with you, Ron Rogers. <laughs> yeah, nice to nice to have you with us, Susie. Thanks for everything. As always, um, we'll be talking with you soon. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Pleasure. Great, right. thank you so much. It was lovely to have you as a as a kind of a comfort um, person in the in the background, so just in yeah, case in things were to arise. <laughs> it's very reassuring. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm going to wish you all well, and I'm going to officially close the meeting at this time. Okay, Sounds so take right. care, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye.